I want to talk today about um, clamping your work to your workbench. Sometimes, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can clamp your work down to the work top. But I want to talk about uh, putting the clamp in the vise and using this very um, cheap, effective, uh, controllable way of clamping your work securely. Um, if you are just starting in woodworking, you've got a bench going, you don't have a dogging system, you haven't bought into a dogging system, and you want to just clamp some things to your workbench for working that material and uh, show you some alternative that will help you to get started. It's primarily to get you off the ground, up and running as fast as, and effectively as you can. Um, I've used this system for 50 years. I find it works very well. I have a couple of clamps uh, like these. These are square clamps, they're box clamps, so they are very good. What I've done is I've taken what was hollow and I've just taken a piece of wood and fitted it into this clamp and then I've um, put a little dimple in this side and this side to hold it in place. Um, so I've retrofitted the clamps. All of my clamps have that in. It gives it a little extra torque. They're inexpensive clamps. They probably cost under £10 or under $10 if you're in the US. I'm not sure about Australia and places uh, like that, mainland Europe, but I'm sure you can get them for a similar price. This, these are aluminium or aluminum. They work great. I found them very effective. But let me give you the, the first level that I might want to use this clamp for is to clamp something in the vise that I might want to work that I can't put deep into the vise. And this might be one situation where, let's say I wanted to make this hexagonal or round. I can clamp this in the vise this way and I can remove the corners with a spoke shave. Um, I can do different things because it's in this position. So here, for instance, here, I want to make a hexagon here. So I'm just using a heavy spoke shave. I'm going against the grain, as you can tell. So I just turn it around. And I can make this um, square section of wood round without using a lathe. And then I can go to a finer spoke shave like this one. So I hogged off with the heavy one. Now if I wanted to make this round, I would go in here like this. So you can see how effectively this holds my workpiece. I can't really put this in the vise because I would be too near, my knuckles would be catching on the bench. This is a very effective way for securing your material. Now, if you wanted to change, what are the situations that occur to most woodworkers when they're making anything is they have to clamp something that's too big for the vise, mostly. So this vise extends to 12 inches. It opens up to 12 inches. I can't get a regular piece, a big piece of plywood in there, say something like this, here's a piece of plywood. I might want to secure this for many different reasons. So I just set the distance on my clamp here, like this. That's close enough. And then what I do is I just set this in the vise, like this. I want to, I want to get the head below this three quarter inch, this is three quarter inch plywood, so I want to be below this and I want to be the same on this end here. So I just slacken off, lift up just a hair, get this equal to both ends. Now, if I clamp without any spacer in here, this is going to flex. So I just have a U-shaped piece of pine, the same distance as this distance between the clamp and the edge of my bench. So that fits there and I can move this anywhere on here, depending on the length of the material that I'm going to be working with. So here, for instance, now I cinch up my piece of plywood, which could be a frame, it could be a tabletop, it could be solid wood, it could be MDF, it could be just about anything. And once I have this set here, I am ready to work this piece of material. So if I pull, 
here, it will flex. But most of my work is going to be pushing this way or pushing this way. If I was scraping, for instance, like this, and I wanted to take off these marks from my layout, which I often do, I can take off this surface quite easily and, um, and work my material all the way out to this outer edge. I can work from this close to this clamp head like this and work down from this end. And that gives me a nice secure feeling when I'm working with the material, which is what I want. I want this secure feeling while I'm working. So that gets me a whole tabletop. Let's say I wanted to go across the workbench. Let's say I've got a very long um, tabletop to work on. I can work across the edge here. Now there's one thing you would have to watch possibly and that was, is going to be uh, the edges of the table. If you've already finished your table, I usually leave mine slightly oversized so I can take my plane or my scraper and I can scrape this way too, across here. So this is very nice and solid. If I am concerned about the edge of my table, if, it, if I've got a soft wood, say like a pine or something like that, I can open up, the, and this really helps too in terms of grip. What I have on one side here, I just have a saw cut on one side. I cut these on the band saw. So I make these to the right width, like this. And then I anchor this in here. This really anchors it very nicely. And if it's sticking up above, like this one is sticking slightly proud, I can just take my plane and plane this down to surface like this. So now that's down, it's not in my way. I can take my scraper and not worry about damaging the edges of my workpiece. It's got a nice solid feel about it again. Very solid, even though this is all the way up here, I, it feels very solid here when I'm scraping down here. I don't really feel any issue. And always remember, you know, you see a little bit of movement in here you see movement no matter what dogging system you've got. It, it doesn't mean that a dogging system that's specifically designed doesn't mean that they don't move. They do move. So all dogging systems move. So this system is no different. But you can see now we've got a very good system using an existing clamp. We don't even have to have this clamp dedicated to this bench. You can, this is just a regular sash clamp that you would need in any joiner's workshop, in any woodworker's workshop. So it works very effectively. Now, if you've got solid wood material, like this one here, and you need to clamp, you've got this exactly the same. There is no difference. And what you have in this is you have the ability to go across your workbench again, which works great. Let's say I wanted to hog off a lot of stock on this. This is a lamination that I've done and I, uh, I'm going to make a bench top or something like that. I might look at another plane. This is just a regular smoothing plane and this will work just fine. So I can plane with the grain like this or I could go across the grain, which I often do with a scrub plane, for instance. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on this piece of wood and it's nice and secure. I'm not, it's not moving, it's not moving at all. But I can clamp this as much as I like, but put the little shims in there, the little packers, if you feel you might be damaging the edge of your workpiece. So that's that. Now if I want to plane with the grain, I would just turn this around this way. So I have a very nice anchor on my bench top that gives the real solidity over here. And again, anchor it down, put your spacer in. I didn't have my spacer in that time, so I'm putting my spacer in. 
just to stop any flex. And now I can play in this way and feel total confidence. So you can see how this works, it works so nicely. So I'm not sure why I would adopt another method if this one's working so well. It's very in inexpensive, it's very effective, and I like it. I've got frames here. Let's look at this. Let's say you wanted a frame, you've got a frame that you need to work on just a little bit. Again, put these spaces in. On oak I wouldn't bother, but just clamp it up and you can scrape your surfaces here. That works fine. You could take this and you could plane it too. You can plane the surface here nicely. Like that. So that works, that's on oak. You can see how this, how effective this is. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, you could put this on here as well. And you could work on these mortise holes here if you needed to start chiseling out, cleaning up your mortise holes. You've got your workpiece anchored to the bench top. It works for other aspects, not just planing and scraping. It can work for sawing. That one is nice. What about bigger pieces, say? What about this one here? Let's say this is gonna need some extra fettling. So shims again, if you've already got this piece finished and you wanted to uh, shim this out, you could do that. Just shim it and that will keep it nice and tight. And then you can plane along the length here like this. You could also go across your workbench again. So this makes your workbench become very, very versatile. So across here. Bring in your your jaw, a little bit of a shim in here. This just quickens up the process too. You don't even need to use these just to uh, cushion your work, but you could also use it to, um, to fill in the gap just to speed up the process. So here, again, now I can work on this edge, get this going here. So I can fix things after I finish my project so that works perfectly for 90% of your clamping needs. I think you could probably say 95% of your clamping could be done with this, um, with this uh, clamp in the vice system. Lost my piece of wood. So this little thing just goes over here. This is the same distance as this gap here. A lot of times people have asked me why why I uh, have this protruding past the edge of the bench. Why don't I have this flush so I can clamp to the, ape, to the apron, to the tabletop, to the bench top? I haven't found that of any real value at all ever in 50 years. I have no reason for it. It hasn't worked for me. I don't need it. And the, the main reason I like what I have here is because I can take a piece of wood and this is so simple, it makes so much sense. I can put my hand here, I can keep a grip on my overhand here, I can grip anything into the vise without trapping my fingers. Otherwise, I have to come from this side or from underneath. I can't come from underneath because my fingers will get pinched, so I only have this front grip. If I've got a heavier piece of wood, say something like this, Let's say this gets to 10 inches wide. How am I going to get this in the vise? My hand is not big enough to get it this way. So now I can already feel the strain on my hand because I only have this one grip available to me. So when I want to go low in the vise, say like this, I can't do it. So this is the way I would go and it works perfectly. You can see it's so quick. Now I want you to understand this and I probably would like you to adopt this away from the apron um, 
situation for your bench job, for the vice job, but that's going to be up to you. I'm just presenting this as an alternative. This is very typical on all joiners' workbench. The English workbenches were made this way, not flush as people have led you to think. Now, sometimes we may mistake this quick release vice for a stem vice or for um, a different type of vice, the old fashioned vice where the whole of the bench top was the second jaw, and this was a free jaw that went on a couple of pinions, and we rotated a wheel here and we anchored our piece in the vise. That's a totally different type of vise. It's not the same vise as this quick release vise, which really is the universal vise now. This is probably the most common vise used universally throughout the world, I would say. All right, so let's say, well, I think we've already established this is a very long piece of wood. You've got the same situation. The problem here, uh, when you see this, is if I put this, anchor this in the vise here, I want to do this, the vise, the jaws of the uh, clamp won't close up on this piece. So what I would do in this situation is I would go outboard and I would get this close to where I want it set, like that, and I would just anchor this in the vise here, just very loosely just to start, because I want to move it bring my workpiece over here and then drop this to where it's below the bench, below the, um, the jaws of the clamp or below the piece of wood. And then I just anchor this again. I'd use the shims on the side here, especially on pine, I would use shims on here. But now this is ready. So I have this whole length, I can plane here. That's a lot of pressure. I'm taking off a very thick, heavy shaving. So you can see it's not moving very much. If I want to, I can take this outboard one and I can drop my piece of wood right on here, bring my board back in and reclamp it. And that will eliminate the kind of movement that I was talking about then. So there you have it. It gives me total access to the whole piece. I can go down the whole piece like this. When I get to this point, when I've outreached myself, I move this up another stage and bring this up to the vise here. And I go the next leg like this across the whole piece so I can work down the whole length. And I can turn it around and work from the other end now if I want to. So you can see how effective that would be. This is a very, very basic method for working with your wood. Now then, we've got a tail vise on here, on this end of the bench. We have a tail vise here, so I can use this with the same method. I can bring this here, put this in the vise here, and I can drop a, a piece of wood into my vise just like this. So for those who really do want to anchor something in the vise, you can do this. You can use this method here. Drop this down, cinch it tight, and then tighten this up here. Bring this up to whatever height you want here, like this. And this is dead solid. It's not going to move at all. It's perfect. So now I can take my shaving. This is a piece of oak. rugged grain there. But you can see this holds it dead solid. Even though I've got a gap in here, I don't have a space, I have no clamp to clamp it on. So you can see how effective this is for securing the material. So that works really well too. So let's take this out. So we'll be covering more on this tail vise soon, just to show you. Here's another situation that you might find yourself in. A long piece of uh, fancier wood. Uh, you set this again in your tail vise and into here. I'm running out of space a little bit here. But this gets me solid, very, very solid. So I'm solid here, solid in the vise, 
dead solid. I've got the whole weight of my bed anchoring this piece of wood. So I can go along here, clean up the surface of my door style or my window style and even go beyond here and surface plane this. This is very nice. This really works well. You can see the value in this type of a system. So this is really what I wanted to introduce you to. So you could evaluate for yourself. What about something like this? This is so awkward shaped. This is hard to get this in the vise. This is a piece of you that I'll be working sometime in the future into a piece of furniture. This is another one where I would, you know, you can experiment with different pieces that you want to work with, but this, this might be awkward to, to dog. It might not be. I'm not saying it is particularly awkward. But I anchor this this way. Just that take up there. My distance piece in the end here, just to stop it moving. And now I can scrape very solidly using a cabinet scraper, get into the heart of the wood. I could plane this quite easily. I can work from this end here. Like this. It works so effectively. Then I can move this down. I could move this further along the vise to here. Relocate. Pop this in. I get it nearer to my vise so I get good solidity here again. And I can work down the whole piece that way. So if it's an awkward shape like this one obviously is. Um, and I might want to again go across my vise here if, my, if it fits, which this one will. I can find a hollow in there. Clamp this at the widest point so I get this in the vise like this. Make sure I'm just below the surface. Anchor this this. Cinch it up tight. Little spacer if I need it, which I won't because I'm so near to the bench uh, vice itself. So I can clamp this on the, even on the wany edge here. And this is so solid. I don't have any resistance. It's not moving. I feel confident and that's what I need to feel. I'm taking these strokes with confidence and I See, I'm showing you just how this would work with just about any type of piece of wood. Any length of material you have, almost any width. If your clamp is 10 feet wide, you can clamp this. If it's 10 feet wide, you could clamp a tabletop in the hole of it. So that will give you a little bit. What about something? I just remember seeing this earlier. If you want to clamp something that's even awkward, like this, you can clamp this, you can bring it up to maximize the depth in the, in the jaws of the clamp here. And you can even chock this side, you could even take something, extend it this way, chock it here, and then just plane away like this. All right, so that's nice, I love it. Sometimes you've got these more awkward pieces that you want to work with. Um, let's say you wanted to plow this. This would be difficult to plow. You drop this in here. Often they're right out of reach for you. So you can drop this in here, cinch it tight. So this is where I've got this small plow plane. It might also be, that I just want to plane this edge. But what happens when I come to a plow plane like this? I want to plow it, the fence always gets in the way, the vice gets in the way of the, the fence on here. So here, this will show you just the versatility of this particular addition. So you can see how effective that is. 
even more difficult than that so often is getting this in this edge. If you're making, say, a draw side and you want to plow it again, you can adjust this, get this even above. You can come pretty high up and get this out of the way. You can come on the outboard again, which I'm doing here, and you can set your plane. And then cinch it tight wherever it is. See, this is going to catch on this jaw here catches on this jaw. So I need to go lower in my vise just to go below the stem of the plow plane, cinch this up here, cinch this here, keep it nice and tight and you can see now I'm on the outboard so I've got my groove going in there unhindered and this works so nicely. So these are just alternatives for you to think through. This works whether you've got bench dogs or not. If you want bench dogs, go ahead and bore the holes and put your bench dogs in. I'm not at all saying you shouldn't have bench dogs. I'm just saying that straight off the bat, new woodworker, you want to get going, this clamp in the vice method will work for you and you can adapt it, it's very versatile and this is what I want you to understand, this is just to get you going, you can add whatever concept to this you want, uh, it's an alternative and it works.